This is Mikra, ready with another installment of Devil's Advocate. Today, I am with good old family friend Elijah to talk about a very beloved show amongst many of us, especially him since he grew up with the show. We're all fans of Avatar, The Last Airbender, and we all hate and despise The Last Airbender movie. And that, exactly. (laughs) What movie indeed. Today's video is, you guessed it, what the last airbender movie did better than the show. <laughs> and We're done. <laughs> We're so done. <laughs> the first point is Southern Water Tribe population. So in the show, it always felt weird whenever we watched that that they're considered, the, the Water Nation was kind of split off into the North and the South. The North was like clearly like almost like a kingdom, like a big fortress with villages, shops, big castle in the middle, all that, all that stuff. And then you have the Southern Water Tribe, which is just like 10 people. How did you guys become to be known as the Southern Tribe? When the movie decided to put a little bit more oomph into who lives here and actually show, you know, like food, people, people fish, there's kids everywhere and there's adults everywhere. It's not just, oh, all the able-bodied men went with our father to go fight in the war. There's still some people here, even after all that. So the mo- I feel like the movie um, did that a little better. I mean, I agree in the sense of that in, it was more realistic in terms of like, oh yeah, there's people who live here, and, you know, this actually, the people are left can actually sustain, like, a livelihood. Because the TV show is like, what, like old people and kids. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think sustain is the key word because so, it's like you left behind all these people to fend for themselves. Yeah, the, literally the, the dude in charge of was Sokka, but... Well, not in charge, but you know... Like, he was the protect, man protect, of the house. Protecting them. Um, but, you know, I think of all the things to get right, I think they could have... they didn't get this one right, they would have been okay. <laughs> the movie did a better job with Katara as far as making her feel like she was a child and not some adult in a 15 year old's body and here's some examples so both show bo- both versions acknowledge that she had to grow up into the role because of the death of their mother once their mother was gone she had to kind of fill that void in the family and there's lots of young women out there in their teens that kind of mature faster than guys so it's not that unusual that she matured more than Sokka did before Aang comes in the picture or Ong. It's, it's very odd that in the show, throughout throughout the show, she seems to be far beyond her years, almost unrealistically. It almost felt like you were watching someone who was not a kid. This actress felt more like I was watching a kid rise to a challenge of this adventure, where either Katara kind of takes it in stride almost very easily. I mean, I hear what you're saying. She was definitely more of a kid in the movie than she was the TV show. Like, it's not necessarily a bad thing to make her feel seem a little older, because I wouldn't have said she's like too much older, maybe a couple years. But I wouldn't say it was necessarily something that was like negative because it was a big key, not really a big key point, but like in her personality, it was a big thing in her personality. She was known for being mom like. And I think they, they mentioned it in the TV show a couple of times, you know, they get her, that's like her, her thing. Yeah. But actually, I hear what you're saying. She was more of a kid in the TV show. But whether or not that made it better or not, I, I don't know. I think, I think it's in the case of one of those things where going realistic isn't always better or more entertaining. It's always, sometimes it's just that there's a reason why people fake things or make things, exaggerate things, you know, like car explosions. They're not realistic, but if they were realistic, it'd be really lame. Well, this may not bode well for the next point, but I'm going to make it anyway. A costume design. So, um, it's, I think it's arguable to say that the costumes were a little bit more, um, yes, realistic, but also better, especially when it comes to the Fire Nation. The Fire Nation felt more like a menace, like evil empire when you watch them, whereas everyone in the show all had these bland but very distinct color, like, coordination. So you, you every, like, Water Nation is clearly blue, Earth Kingdom is clearly green, Fire Nation is clearly, like, dark and red. The Air Nomads were all orange and red. That would be what I would say, is that the movie did a better job with costume design, it gave more variety and realism to what everyone was wearing. Um, rather than the show who just threw together some some colors and distinct features of everyone and then blanketed over every nation Yeah, I mean I I can see your point there I see I think a lot of it comes down to more of just a lot of differences coming from the fact that's through a lot not well. It's uh, animation versus uh, 
Live action. Yeah, live action. <laughs> Real action, that's what I was gonna say. Because <laughs> a lot of times when it comes to animation, it's simpler to just animate. You know how it is, it's simpler to animate. Just... And I do think that they are more realistic in terms of the outfits. I think the whether or not they're better or not is really uh, all down to um, your opinion. The way the focus of the flashbacks when in the movie versus the, the show. So the show focused a lot on his personal life in with the monks. Whereas the movie focused more on his, you know, school life and training and mentorship and in like in like classmates. They didn't do a lot of dwelling on those flashbacks, but there were a lot of key moments that they showed of him learning to do things and and, and finding out he's the avatar and then the bowing thing that they added to it. Thing where he didn't want to be the avatar, but it was clearly his destiny, which they nod back to at the end of the movie where he finally accepts his fate and bows back. Well, they'll talk a little bit more about his the impact of his decisions uh, toward around, for those around him rather than focusing on him. Since most flashbacks, I think, are cooler or better when they're done from the perspective of the person having the flashback, because then it turns more into a, f a flashback. Otherwise, it's more like just like, I don't know how to describe it, but just like you're seeing something happen in the past versus you're seeing something happen in the past from that person's perspective. And the fact that it's from the perspective makes it more into like a personal flashback. But I prefer the personal flashbacks because it makes it, adds more emotion to the flashback and also more towards the character development of Aang, which is the purpose of the flashbacks, give me more perspective on why he didn't, why he left and why he didn't, you know, why he didn't want to become the Avatar. From the movie, it presented it more as like it was from the, like he, he was in a school, almost like, like for me when I was watching those flashbacks, it was almost like he was, their, their class just went outside to learn, rather than like in the TV shows more like he was, it was, it was a, um, like he was a monk, it was more like a lifestyle, rather than the movie they presented it as like, oh you know, he's in class today. Avatar The Last Airbender on Nickelodeon, there's a children's show that was airing at a time that um, they typically do not show on screen deaths, and given that, it, that they wanted to maintain a certain rating and didn't want to push it too far i'm pretty sure they did that on purpose yeah because there was a, there's a lot of moments in the show where people get hurt or it could they could be killed but they make a point to make sure you see that they're okay the fire nation shoulders are crawling out of the tipped over tank or the, that blew up like anything that blows up is like oh they're dead they crawl out and they're fine it's like hmm huh. unless, you're <laughs> unless you're jet That's but it. but then you're killed off screen like Jet. So in the movie, since it's done in a movie and they're not afraid of a, of a PG, PG-13 rating, they're not afraid uh, to... They're afraid of good ratings, though. <laughs> 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 they're, they're not afraid to push the envelope a bit and, and, and kill someone on screen. Uh, the, more particularly, um, uh, what's his face? What's his face? Admiral Zhao? Zhao, thank Zhao. you. Okay, Zhao was drowned on screen by Northern Water Tribe, and that was pretty messed up, given that the show never did anything like that. If you're comparing the two, in comparison, that was yeah. pretty messed up that they showed that. So I think this movie um, is uh, is better than The Last Airbender and Bender Book 1, because I'm, I'm comparing book, both books. Book two and book three get a little darker. But as far as book one versus movie, the, the movie tends to be a little bit more darker. I mean, it is a kid's TV show. It's supposed to be a kid's movie. I feel like the darker elements... I mean, I feel like that's all pers uh, not perspective, opinion too, you know? If you like a darker movie, you like a more lighthearted movie. It's all it's all too. I do... You know, yeah, the movie was a little bit darker. You know? They killed, you know, Admiral Zhao or Commander Zhao and it also killed the movie. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments what arguments you think can be made for this movie on the Devil's Advocate side, or just feel free to rant away, ranting's welcome, of how much you did not like this movie. Tell me how disappointed you were when you saw this movie, waiting and being fully excited for that remake to come out. Subscribe for more content from this channel, like this video and share it with your friends if you enjoyed it, and uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this was really hard to do. Because with the... We did a... I, I filmed the Captain Marvel one, and I also did the Lion King one that's already been released. And those were kind of easy to try to look through and stuff. But this movie is not only a bad adaptation, it's... A bad movie. It's bad. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it's a bad movie.